Hey guys, my name is Courtney Dunker. I am 30 years old. I'm originally from Southern California, but I currently live here in Maui. I am a Christian and I have been following and walking with Jesus since I was five years old. And my husband and I met through social media and we lived overseas in like seven different countries while he played professional basketball overseas until he retired early and we ended up here in Maui doing ministry. I now work online full time as a health and fitness coach and I absolutely love it. Helping women transform their health and fitness journeys and really find their confidence and self-esteem uh, is one of my favorite things and gives me so much purpose every single day. I also love, love, love using social social media to make a difference and provide a powerful voice that can hopefully change someone's life in one way or another. So I'm really excited to be able to share my story with you guys today. And um, yeah, this is a little bit about our story. So our story, we've been married now for five years and um, it was a couple months into marriage as newlyweds. We were living overseas in New Zealand and I had kind of just personality wise wasn't very good at consistently taking my birth control and with us changing insurances and transferring and whatnot there came a time in June um, in 2015 when I thought I was pregnant I was convinced I was pregnant and I also had grown up um, in a church environment where it was kind of like don't have sex you're gonna get pregnant and so I being a newlywed I was like oh my gosh like I'm totally pregnant I have all of these symptoms I have all of these signs and so I convinced my husband that I needed to go to the doctor and get a blood test so we went and we we got a blood test and that was the first negative pregnancy sign that we had had mostly because we at, at up until that point we hadn't been trying so when I received that news both my husband and I kind of woke up to the fact that we actually were looking forward to potentially finding out that we were going to be parents and even though we hadn't been trying we made the decision at that point that we actually wanted to be intentional and start trying so we you know kind of stopped not trying and would consider ourselves trying but again it was like oh you know whatever God has for us we will we will let happen. So the summer came, we went back to California, spent the summer with um, my family and then went back overseas in the fall to Europe and back into the basketball season. And so I started finding the months going by and I started tracking and paying a little bit more attention to the apps. I downloaded every app. My friends that were getting pregnant, I was like, what app are you using? Let me, let me know so that I can do it too. And I just started being more intentional and saying, okay, well, it's not just happening as they say it can. So maybe I just am doing something wrong. So I started tracking things and Josh and I started taking steps to be really intentional about um, starting our journey and trying to have a family. And so it wasn't about uh, until a year in that we decided, you know, we were 20, probably 26 at the time, and it had been a year and nothing had happened. So I decided, let's go to the doctor and let's just make sure that everything is good to go and that we are, you know, taking the right steps. Um, as I had heard, you are not necessarily supposed to go in because it's not a concern unless you've been trying for a year if you have a regular cycle. So I was in the position where I was like, all right, let's go in, it's been a year, let's just kind of be ahead of the game and let's figure out what the options are. Um, and so at that point, the doctor went through a couple of just generic tests and um, established that everything was fine and so prescribed us, um, I believe at the time it was Clomid and Estradiol. And so we did some medicated cycles that summer while we were home. And we have kind of a, a unique journey in the sense that Josh was playing professional basketball overseas. We didn't have our fertility treatments while we were overseas for the basketball seasons. So throughout our story, we've had seasons of, you know, taking a lot of immediate action and seasons of pulling back and, and just letting time happen and seeing what happens. So we basically did two medicated cycles during the summer, then we moved back overseas and kind of put it on the back burner because we weren't with my doctor, we didn't have the same fertility treatment overseas where we were, so we just put it on pause. 
And so um, at this point, we were overseas and just spent some time really praying over it and really just asking the Lord to guide us. And at this time in my journey, I started having more emotions. It felt like the first year went really fast and I was kind of just excited about learning the apps and whatever and I was still a newlywed and and so that second year when we were overseas I started feeling discouraged. I started feeling like wow what if this actually isn't as easy as they say and what if my story is different and what if this doesn't just happen for us um, and I started having a lot of questions and doubts and specifically in my own faith journey and my own faith story um, at growing up as a Christian I kind of assumed that um, you know if I was good, if I kind of ticked the boxes and I was the good Christian and I, you know, waited until we got married to, you know, be together and all of these boxes that I felt like, wow, if you look at the track sheet, <laughs> I did a pretty good job, right, God? Um, and so I kind of had convinced myself growing up that there was cause and effect a, a lot in life. And so the same should be true with God. Like if I did things your way, shouldn't I be rewarded for that? And how are my friends who um, aren't following you, like how are they being blessed? And I, I just started struggling internally with who God was and what his purpose was for my life, uh, as well as where does this fit? Where does God's goodness fit with my fertility story? Because now we are on a fertility journey. It was more than just 12 months. It was 15 months and then 20 months and 22 months and time was ticking away. And every time we came home, I was another year older. And so I sat down and I just started really pouring into, um, just the Bible and what God was saying about um, his goodness and who he was. And so when I came home this the next summer, um, so this would have been, you know, that second summer that we had tried, we went and saw the doctor. So that would have been two years or a year into it. So by that second year mark, because we started trying in June of 2015. So about 2017, they were, you know, okay, it's been two years now. We need to bring out the big guns a little bit more. And since you guys are only home for the summer, we need to kind of e escalate things uh, to an extent. So that is the year that we um, were, you know, told to go see a specialist. And so we transferred out to see a specialist and um, spent some time um meeting with a fertility specialist and just kind of walking through what does this mean what are the stats like what what are her options like I had no no idea the depth of fertility options and treatments and all of the things and all that goes into it and even just honestly like I've been so awoken to the fact that or so awoken I have been so exposed to the reality that every person walking around on this earth is such a miracle like the um just the miraculous meeting and chemistry and just um the way that our bodies are designed is just incredible and so anyway all that to say i met with a specialist and of course the specialist has you know a track list of things that they want to work you through they want to get all the blood work done they want to do you know um the dye test and then they want to do an inter you know uterine scan and all of these steps okay so I go through all of these procedures and steps and I had to stay home for a month or two before I went back overseas to meet with Josh again to get a couple of these steps going so the whole plan was let's get all of these boxes ticked so that next year when we come home we kind of can can step into the next thing so at this point, um, again, trying, 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 we're still trying and then we'll go through seasons and months where we were discouraged or heartbroken and I felt like every month where I, you know, for me, I got really sick. I get really sick um, when that time of the month comes and so not only was it emotionally a battle for me to be in the right mindset that this was possible and have hope, um, but then I was also facing facing physical illness every single month, vomiting, passing out, you know, all of these extreme cramps um, because of, I guess, how my body processes through that, that phase each month. And um, so I just, 
I think back to moments overseas and all of these different countries that we lived in and all of the different bathrooms that, you know, I would throw up in and all of this, like the story that God or that we were on, um, it was emotional. There was times where I had to go to the emergency room because I was so sick and doing that in a foreign country and then processing not being able to get pregnant without any community or any family or friends nearby and just me and my husband was really challenging for us. Um, and I think that that's why we were able to grow so closely together as uh, you know, a newly married couple because we only had each other. But it caused us to crave community and I think that that's why I love social media so much is because for the first few years of our journey that was the only space that I had to connect with other women who were on this journey who were going through the same heartbreak because I really do believe that it's not something you can fully understand until you are in that those shoes and in that place um and so Third year comes and I end up going in for the um, this laparoscopic surgery where they go in, make sure everything is clear. I had passed every test up until this point. Josh had passed his test. We were all good to go. There was no reason, no red flag coming up that should have said otherwise. Um, and it was kind of tricky too because his insurance was down in Australia where he's from and my insurance is obviously here in the US so we had to do tests in different areas. Um, so then, you know, fast forward and we are home again for the summer. Um, I end up having this surgery and had so much faith that if I had, if I just had this surgery, that the Lord would just like open up my womb. And I had so many friends reaching out saying, I had the same surgery. I was able to get pregnant like the very next month. So I was very expectant and hopeful that if I had endometriosis, that could be taken out. Um, and I would be clean and ready to go for the next month. And so my surgery actually ended up being pretty quick and easy. There was a couple of um, polyps or whatever that they had to take out and a few spots of endometriosis, but nothing that was like, wow, this is why you can't get pregnant. So when that um, surgery had taken place, I, I was happy because there was no specific reason, but I was also very discouraged because I felt like there has to be a reason. Like, I don't understand why we're not pregnant. And I really battled that because my personality is very much like, tell me what to do and I'll do it. And then I want to be able to achieve what is said if you go through the steps, right? And so I'm like, okay, get married, do the thing, have baby. Um, and so I just believed that it should have been easier. And I really struggled with not being able to do anything about it. So we have the surgery. Again, natural, you know, trying, 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 nothing happening. And so the next time we came around for summer, um, I think this was actually the third year, I want to say, or the fourth year, we ended up stepping into um, further fertility treatment and decided to do two IUIs. Um, and so we did that for two uh, months in a row and I had to give myself shots. Um, I had to take the, the Clomid and the Estral and all of these, you know, pills and things. And, um, and I was just really excited. I was like, how could this not work? Like talk about aiming and perfection. Like everything's lining up. They know that I'm about to drop an egg. They know that they're going to put it right where it needs to be. Um, and I remember the second time Josh had already left to go back overseas. So he, we had frozen, you know, everything for him and he was already overseas. So that was hard to go through it alone. Um, and our lifestyle isn't really, it wasn't conducive to fertility treatments. And that's pretty much why we had never gone down the route of IVF yet. Um, because we didn't really want to spend months away from each other. Um, and so my mom went with me and I remember putting on my clothes that morning for my second IUI after the first one had failed and I was just bursting with confidence. I truly felt like this is it. This is what, this is gonna happen. And so I like even made a post on social media like dressing for success, like so confident that the Lord is gonna move this mountain. And I felt so ministered to and so encouraged. Um, and so we went in and you know, they did the this minor procedure and I was sitting there and I'm just like, this is it. Like I'm getting pregnant right now. Um, and it was, um, I won't ever forget, and I'm, I'm gonna cry. I won't ever forget finding out the second time 
because I, my friend, um, probably about an hour and a half away from where my parents lived, which where I was staying while I was away from Josh and doing this, um, they asked me to come up and house sit. So I went and uh, I was supposed to not get my period, right, if I was pregnant. And I started getting sick at their house and I, I realized that I was um, not going to be pregnant. And I had to go to the store because I kind of convinced myself that if I didn't buy tampons, maybe I wouldn't need them. And so I went to the store in a lot of pain, in a lot of, you know, whatever, I was sick. And I stood in the aisle. And of course, the aisle for tampons is the same aisle for um for other pregnancy related things and for pee sticks and whatever and um, I saw this couple down at the end and she had a little baby bump and I just lost it like in the middle of this <laughs> grocery store and how unfair it felt that why like why me why us why is this so hard like and I think a lot of my struggle really came from not just wanting to be a mom but understanding as a Christian that God ha God's word says that children are a blessing and um, it talks about them being an arrow right like an air in the arrows in your little thing in Psalms and I just remember feeling so frustrated why would God withhold a good thing from me and why would he give it to people you know why is there unfairness in this area and what did I do? Like, is this, you know, I struggled with, did I do something? Like, did I cause this? Um, and just the uncertainty and the unknown and the pain of it all. And just realizing that this was not my time. And so I ended up driving home and I posted a post on social media and because I was crying so hard um, after that whole grocery store situation, I decided just to go home because I needed to be with people I need to be with my parents and people that loved me and could encourage me and support me and I was alone at the house if that I was house sitting for and so um, I was on the freeway and I had to pull over in this parking lot because I couldn't see the road because I was crying so hard and I took a picture and I just remember sitting in that parking lot and I have never felt so much heartache and so much pain in my heart and my soul like never before um it was like i was given something and then it was taken away from me and i don't know if that was just because i had so much hope and expectation of what you know of what should have been but i felt broken and you know, I think part of the process has been learning how to keep your heart open to love when you feel so hurt because when you're hurt, you want to just withdraw and you want to come in and you want to just stay away from people or things, exposures that could hurt you because when you open up your heart to love, when you open up your heart to life and, and, thing, and relationships and people, there's a potential that they could hurt you. There's a potential that you could, your heart could be broken. And so, you know, the, the balance of figuring out how to walk through fertility without completely closing off your heart and becoming cold and bitter while still welcoming love with the potential of heartbreak when you're experiencing heartbreak is a very difficult challenge. And so, um, I went home and so uh, the next night there was a, um, what do they call it? I forget what it's called. It's in Anaheim by Greg Laurie's church um, in California. It was kind of like a big conference, a big worship session and stories and um, and so I went with my parents because they had tickets and I ended up just deciding to go and I... I remember um, my parents, they never struggled with having us. And so I think it's been really challenging to see me go through this and not really know how to help me or love me through it. And so I, we went to this conference and 
Mercy Me, I think it was, played the song, Even If. And I just cried and I couldn't stop crying. Because I knew that I loved the Lord. And I knew that if his plan meant that Josh and I wouldn't become parents, you know, in the way that we wanted or just even at all, then I was okay. Even if he never healed me or even if he never answered the desires of my heart, it was okay. And my parents just held me and they were crying over me. As the music was just like floating around us and you know, we're in the middle of this huge stadium. Nobody knows why we're crying or anything like that, but I just felt like so broken. Anyways. And so, yeah, that was um, after the second IUI and I made that decision, like I could not go through that again. I couldn't, I couldn't open my heart at that time. I didn't want to stay. Um, I didn't want to stay and do another cycle even though that was the suggestion um, because I wasn't I couldn't do it emotionally I could not do it especially by myself like Josh was overseas already and it was hard for him not to be there for me and me going through all of these highs and lows and um, expectation and pain and uh, it just wasn't in a, I wasn't in a healthy place to open up the door for the third IUI and would have been another you know month or two away from each other so went back overseas um and then kind of just got to a place of I'm done trying um and I'm sure people who have been on their journey for a uh, extended length of time have been in those phases uh where they are you know they go through phases where they're trying and not trying and trying again and we've never stop trying in the sense that we haven't done anything preventative um in the five you know almost five years five years in june but we also have gone through seasons where i've deleted all of the apps off of my phone and i've pulled back and anyway all of that to say i kind of just got to this place of if it's meant to be it's meant to be and nothing can stop the lord from moving um in whatever way that he wants to move and so i just let go and I remember we were in Japan after all of this had happened, living overseas there. And I remember sitting on the floor one night as Josh was on a road trip with his team and I was just sobbing on the floor on my knees and I had the Bible in front of me and I was just like, how, how are you this God? But you're not this God with me. And I felt like, I just felt sad because this God that I read about in the Bible and all growing up was this God of miracles and this God of mercy and grace and healing and I just felt like how many years are gonna go by without my miracle um, and we're begging you and we're asking you for this and I just remember being so frustrated and feeling like is this really who you are because I don't feel you I don't see you that way in my life I don't I don't see you showing up as that God in the Old Testament and the New Testament and so for you know the last few months of our time overseas before Josh decided to retire early um, I really struggled with believing and having a personal relationship with God because I didn't feel I just didn't feel like he cared and I didn't feel like he was hearing me and I did I felt lost and confused um, by what I was feeling and how to reconcile that with what I read and so anyway all that to say um, the the Lord did a good thing in my heart because he uh, ended up opening up the door for us to move here to Maui uh, this past summer and so Josh finished his last year uh, overseas he made the decision to retire early and um, accept a position as a director for a nonprofit that's a sports ministry here on Maui and uh, so we've been here since August and since moving here uh, having community my whole hope in moving here was to find community and 
get plugged back into a church because doing all of this, going through all of this without anybody in our life encouraging us and praying for us and, and loving on us in person, everything was done virtually and I'm so grateful for that. Like I, I, I can't even imagine if we didn't have social media through the years that we were overseas and going through all of these things. But I needed to be around other things and get my mind off of just me and what I wanted. And so coming here, we got plugged into um, Hope Chapel Maui, our church here, and um, just plugged into accountability with some other married couples on the island and being able to share my hurts and my doubts and my frustrations about God with them, be able to go through that and hear their wisdom and be prayed over about that has completely changed um, changed me. And so I was able to open up the, my heart to the next steps again. And so we uh, probably in middle of the fall, we found out that Hawaii is a um, state that allows for insurances to cover a first round of IVF and so I because we had moved I was able to change insurances and so I changed insurances to get the insurance that they suggested that would be able to pay for the first round of IVF we went through and met with our uh, for new fertility specialist that would be based in Honolulu we were in Maui he flew out here for a couple of meetings um, and we were all set to go to begin our first round of IVF in the beginning of um of april and or end of march and then COVID 19 hit <laughs> and so here we are um and it really changed a lot of things on the island because honolulu is a different island and so it would have been different i think if the clinic had been based here in maui maybe we could have moved forward but again when right when we were supposed to go over and start everything and make the payments and because you still have to pay even with insurance and uh we made the decision to wait to see what COVID-19 would do to our economy and to all the things and so um yeah so then uh they shut down travel and even inner island travel was here or there for a minute and um I just actually found out last week that we can proceed if we want to uh, with IVF and with our cycle, they are now allowing uh, medical based travel without having to quarantine. And so we can fly to Oahu and take these steps forward, but um, we're unsure right now. There's just a lot of uncertainty with what's going on with COVID-19. And to be honest, I feel like every time I've tried to move forward with um, the next steps, I feel like there's been shut doors and I do believe in like those kinds of signs of just paying attention to your journey and what is, where is God leading and, and what road, you know, what road are you supposed to take? Um, so we're just in a waiting season right now. Um, we made the decision to wait until July to see what would happen, uh, between now and then and open up the door for IVF. In July, we have a year to use the insurance from February to February. So we're in the middle of deciding that right now. Uh, but it does give me so much excitement because when we sat down with the doctor with IVF, they explained that the statistics would be like giving us an 80% chance of success. And so to me, that's, that's just really exciting that God could use that and open up the door for that. But even IVF itself, there were a lot of questions that we had. We had so many questions about what does the Bible say about this as Christians? What are we, how is our response supposed to be? Is this taking, you know, creation into our own hands as humans? And, um, what do we believe about birth? And there's so many questions and gray areas within fertility that are difficult to navigate. And I never expected ever, if you had told me on my wedding day that in five years we would be having those kinds of conversations about like embryos and you know, all of these things in life, I would have just looked at you like you were crazy. But it just goes to tell you that a lack of education happens so frequently within this, um, within this area like people just aren't educated on what goes into what ac actually IVF is and how there's different types of IVF and um so anyway 
there have been a lot, a lot, a lot of growth and, and changes over the years, but we're expected. So as far as like Mother's Day next week, um, I, I love Mother's Day. I think it's incredible. I know so many incredible moms and I know that I wouldn't be who I am today without my mom. And I know my husband wouldn't be who he is without his mom. And so it is hard being five years into this journey because now I've seen multiple friends have two or three babies and not just one. At the beginning, I think that was okay because I was like, well, there's still time for me to, you know, maybe our seconds could line up or our third kids could line up. And so I felt like at the beginning when I would hear pregnancy announcements or Mother's Day or whatever, it was um, not as hard in the sense that I felt like I still had time and I was newer on the journey. But now being five years in, I've seen people, you know, lap me like they're on their third fourth baby and I'm sitting over here like where's my first I don't see you anywhere um and so for me Mother's Day honestly it's not as bitter as I would expect it to be mostly because when I was living overseas we didn't really celebrate it or like go anywhere or do anything for it this year might be different because if things do open up and I am able to go to church that's gonna be a challenge one of the years for Mother's Day we were in New Zealand and I remember um, hearing someone speak on on Mother's Day and they had a, a woman come and speak a mom and that was a really big challenge because the message was geared towards moms and I just felt a little bit of shame and guilt that I wasn't a mom and I struggled with not being able to provide that for my husband. I think that there's something intrinsic about women that we want to, we want to provide, you know, a child for our husband, you know, we want to be able, like, that's part of our makeup, I think. Um, that's what I believe in. So for me, I felt a longing to be in that, you know, mom's club and... Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to the day that I get to say that I'm a mom, but I think I'm looking even more forward to the Mother's Day that I get, you know, I get to celebrate. Uh, I don't know if I ever will, to be honest, but yeah, I think it's pretty incredible to see other women living it out, you know, well and, and not and being intentional in raising their children and stewarding that gift because it is a gift stewarding it with intentionality with grace with understanding that that child was not guaranteed to have to be given to them but was gifted to them anyways and they didn't do anything to deserve that but they were gifted that child like what a miracle what a gift so mother's day honestly is just a gift to be able to celebrate those that are stewarding that gift well and i pray that you know one day um that I can be a mom, you know, and be able to share in that excitement and not forget what pain and heartache and journey led to that day. Um, I do feel like my journey has given me the gift of being able to cherish when that day comes. As far as like sharing my experiences on social media and being able to make a difference in other people's lives, I love doing it because I've always been a writer. I have journals and diaries from like a fourth grade, third grade, second grade talking about my crush and whatever and how I was feeling and I've always been a highly emotional person and very in tune and I do believe it's a gift that I've been given to be able to write and share and communicate. Um, in a relational way what my feelings are and be able to impact people through that um, for the better and I try to steward that gift well um, but there's nothing better than getting a message from someone who said I needed to hear what you had to say and honestly I don't feel like it's even me like I really do believe that it's a gift that God's given me and he speaks through me like sometimes I'll sit there you know ready to post on social media or share something about my story 
and the Lord, it'll just like flow. I'm just typing, you know, I'm just typing the words that he puts on my heart. And I just feel like that's such, that's such a gift. I feel so blessed that I get to just be kind of this vessel to encourage other women. Um, and half the time I'm like, I don't know where that came from, but that was great. Um, and it was encouraging and it, it made an impact on people. And I know a lot of women are not comfortable sharing that they're even on a fertility journey or that they um, are having any kind of struggles. I know it can feel like a place of embarrassment or shame because, you know, we grow up in a culture that says it should be easy or that, you know, you should want to be a mom if you're a female. And so there's just different stigmas that can make it challenging or even just people's lack of tact in some of their conversations or just words that they say or comments that they'll make. Um, so it's a beautiful gift to be able to tell someone, here's the feelings of that and be able to educate my friends who have never struggled. That's been such a gift, having open conversations with them and being able to like help them cherish what they have because of seeing my and hearing an authentic, you know, post or story of what I'm going through and be able to cherish their child even more or complain less and whatnot. Um, and same thing like for the women that just feel afraid to say anything, they feel a sense of connection because I know what it's like to go through this alone. Like I was living overseas for so many years with just Josh and I, uh, and we were navigating this alone. And I don't want that for other people. So sharing my journey on social media has been such a blessing because I know that it is reaching the people that need to hear it. Um, and it's giving them answers. You know, maybe some people are afraid to have doubts about who God is or afraid to question him or his goodness. And maybe through my story, they're going to understand that God's goodness is not tied to what he can do in your life here today. Um, it's not tied to how he answers your prayers. It's not tied to how good your life is or what he gives you in your life. It's tied to who Jesus is, what Jesus did on the cross and, and his, um, you know, rising again and living and giving us, you know, the gift of salvation. He's, you know, it says in the Bible that for all fall short of the glory of God. And it is not, you know, through us that we may boast, but through Christ alone that we are able to have salvation of our sins. And so anyway, all of that to say, like maybe hearing that someone like me who grew up in the church or who still has a personal relationship with Jesus is able to get through that and, and believe in his goodness, even to this day, and understand that sometimes it just takes redefining what his goodness is. So I guess for me, my, my hope is that through social media like this page that people can feel connected they can find answers to questions that they have they can find thoughts just like theirs and feel validated and feel heard and feel seen and feel known um, and they can find ways to heal and still love to hope and not be totally broken um, in light of suffering and to be able to hope through suffering and to be able to love through heartbreak and loss and to be able to give when they feel like nothing has been given to them. And I think sometimes we just, we don't know how to do those things together and live in that tension. And that's what fertility has, you know, our fertility journey has taught me where God's goodness actually comes from and how to live in the tension of being both happy for others that are getting the answer to your, you know, to your prayers and, and still mourn what you're not getting to live in the tension of both heartbreak and joy, loss and incredible, you know, suffering and hope and all of those pieces. So I hope that, you know, hearing my story was encouraging and I look forward to connecting with those of you guys that relate to my story uh, more on social media. You can come to join my page at Sewn With Strength.